Beastie Valley. This fine little furry friend is Orange Beastie. Orange Beastie is a pretty average beastie. Tries hard at school, has a lot of friends, loves a good game of squirrel ball, and pretty much considers themselves to be an upstanding member of the Beastie community. After a week of rain, Beastie Valley is finally having a lovely spring day, and Orange Beastie is giddy with outside energy. So they decide to see how long it will take to run from their tree to the other end of the forest. Orange Beastie is amazed at how fast they're running this morning, so they kick it up a notch. Let's see if we can break last summer's record. And suddenly, disaster. Guess Orange Beastie grew a little over the winter, or at least their horns must have, because that lowish tree branch never used to be a problem. It didn't hurt. In fact, Orange Beastie barely felt it. But now, oh boy. Orange Beastie tries not to panic. They're suddenly worried about what their parents are going to say. What everyone will say, actually. A broke horn beastie is embarrassing. Orange Beastie's good mood is now replaced by fear, guilt, and shame. Okay, let's not panic, they think. Maybe we can just hide it and hope the horn grows back. But the other beasties just keep asking Orange Beastie, what's the deal with the hat? Is it going to rain or something? To be honest, it does look kind of ridiculous. Almost as bad as broke off horn. Gotta think of something else. It quickly becomes clear to Orange Beastie that they're going to need some help. Someone they can trust. Someone they can trust to be supportive and understanding and not blab about this to the whole valley. Orange Beastie goes through the possibilities. Blue Beastie doesn't have horns, so they won't understand. Same goes for Green Beastie. Lavender Beastie cannot keep a secret, and Maroon Beastie is away on vacation. Then there's Purple Beastie. Not a terrible idea. They don't have horns, but they're pretty compassionate and a really solid pal. And Purple Beastie is never judgy. Orange Beastie decides to trust Purple Beastie. So after the usual conversation about the possibility of rain, they reveal their dark secret. To their credit, thankfully Purple Beastie's first reaction was one of concern and didn't make Orange Beastie feel silly at all. In fact, Purple Beastie reassured Orange Beastie that it was an accident, not their fault. And it meant a lot to hear that. Purple Beastie has an idea and asks Orange Beastie for the broken horn. We'll just stick it back on and no one will notice, they say. Stick it on with what? asks Orange Beastie. Maple sap, says Purple Beastie. Orange Beastie thinks Purple Beastie seems kind of overconfident about this wild plan. But since no one was there to present a better idea, Orange Beastie decides to go for it, and they give it a shot. For the rest of the day, other Beasties don't seem to notice anything wrong with Orange Beastie's horn. But everyone keeps sniffing the air and asking if Orange Beastie had just eaten a stack of pancakes. After about an hour, the maple sap starts losing its sticky, and the horn starts to wobble loose. On their way back to Purple Beastie's tree, Orange Beastie passes a pack of younger Beasties who start to point and make fun of the wobbly horn. Purple Beastie tries sticking it back on, but it was a mess now. Looks like they're going to need another plan. Purple Beastie suggests they find one of the adult Beasties to confide in. Orange Beastie isn't sure, and worries that getting in trouble with one of the older Beasties for getting hurt would be harder to take than the judgment of the younger Beasties. Purple Beastie agrees that if they go to someone super judgy like Crimson Beastie or Chestnut Beastie, they'll certainly be made to feel worse. But what would happen if they picked someone who they know will want to help? Like who? asks Orange Beastie. Purple Beastie starts listing off a few of the more senior Beasties in the valley, only to be shot down by Orange Beastie. Indigo Beastie? They'll just blame me, says Orange Beastie. Hmm, says Purple Beastie. I've never had that experience with them, but if you feel that way, we don't need to go to them. Burnt Sienna Beastie? They think everyone's problems are their own. And on and on they went until Purple Beastie finally suggests, what about Silver Beastie? Hmm. Orange Beastie thinks about Silver Beastie for a minute. They're super knowledgeable and caring. They always seem to have a good, thought-out opinion on stuff. Purple Beastie agrees and tells Orange Beastie about the time Purple Beastie lost their family thingamajiggy a few months back, and Silver Beastie helped them figure out how to find a new one without making a big deal of it. After a bit of convincing, Orange Beastie decides to go to Silver Beastie, but only if Purple Beastie tags along for moral support, which Purple Beastie is more than happy to do. 
As the two of them wander through the valley, Orange Beastie is nervous and won't make eye contact with anyone else, while Purple Beastie is just their bouncy, supportive self. Then they arrive at Silver Beastie's tree trunk office. With a little prompting and a little stuttering, Orange Beastie explains to Silver Beastie what the problem is. Silver Beastie is super calm, listens respectfully, and without diminishing Orange Beastie's problem, invites the younger Beasties in. Silver Beastie has just the solution. As they examine Orange Beastie's horn stump, Silver Beastie explains that they did the right thing reaching out to an adult Beastie. Because no matter how big your problem is, there will always be someone who can help you. Silver Beastie presents Orange Beastie with a horn-sized cone. They point out that it's actually pretty common to lose a horn and have to wait for it to grow back. Ooh. Fast forward a few weeks <laughs> and here we are. Orange Beastie is living their life as normal, still coping a bit with their problem, but able to let go of the shame and anxiety because they took control and are dealing with it, with some support from others. Ooh.